Hi everybody, it's David Hope here, Observability Solutions Director at Elastic. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to do .NET automatic instrumentation with OpenTelemetry. Now before we dive into this topic, I want to just clear up some confusion. Essentially, when you do automatic instrumentation with .NET, you're using the .NET Profiler API, which can create some confusion because obviously when you talk about a profiler, the thing that comes to my mind is a CPU profiler, which is a very different thing. Now Elastic does have a CPU profiler called Elastic Universal Profiling. So we don't want these things to get confused. The .NET profiler is very different from the Elastic Universal Profiler, which does CPU profiling. Now both .NET profilers and CPU profilers aid in optimizing and diagnosing application performance, but their approaches differ vastly. A .NET profiler offers deep insights specifically into the .NET ecosystem, allowing for fine-grained analysis and instrumentation. In contrast, a CPU profiler focuses on CPU usage patterns across any application, regardless of its development platform. And that's why Elastic's Universal Profiling Profiler can actually get deep visibility into applications and kernel code and can run in an always on fashion. So now we've cleared that up, let's focus on the .NET profiler, which we are discussing in this video. Now there are some foundational concepts that you're gonna to want to know about. Essentially, .NET has something called the CLR, which is the Common Language Runtime. This is a bit like Java's JVM, right? It's a core component of the .NET framework, which acts as the execution engine for all .NET applications. We have the Profiler API, which provides a set of APIs for profiling applications. These APIs let tools and developers monitor and manipulate .NET applications during runtime. We have the intermediate language, which is after .NET has compiled source code, it turns it into IL, which is a low level platform agnostic representation. This is not dissimilar from Java bytecode if you come from a Java background. And then we have the JIT, which is just-in-time compilation, which is in .NET where the CLR compiles IL, intermediate language, into native code before execution. So an automatic instrumenter will actually go through the following steps. It will attach the profiler, which is the open telemetry component that we're gonna be talking about today. It will then use the profiler API to monitor various events. One particular thing is when a method is about to be JIT compiled, compiled from IL into machine code, there's an event that we can hook into so that we can manipulate that IL code after we've been notified about JIT compilation happening, right? Then once the IL code has been modified with our instrumentations, you know, for example, if we want to instrument when a service call starts, right, which is a common thing we want to do, when we get notified of that, then you know we can actually inject some instrumentation to uh, to to essentially manipulate that IL so that we can monitor that call to that service, for example. And and if there's been an upstream service calling the downstream service, we can even get you know trace information out of the header by manipulating that IL code and injecting some code to do that monitoring and take that trace header out. So that's basically an overview of what a .NET automatic instrumentation uh, profiler is doing. Uh, and OpenTelemetry has one of these and we can set this up very, very easily in OpenTelemetry. So let's go and have a look at the code we're talking about here. So essentially we use Docker over here to do most of what we're trying to do. And if you look at our Docker file here, we actually build our .NET application inside our Docker container. This is something I really love. I mean, the bad old days, we used to build our code on a completely different environment to where it was running. Now we can actually build and run on the same environment 
much less likely to get issues inside the same Docker container. So first of all, we build our code. Then we install updates and get a copy of curl downloaded. There we download the uh, .NET instrumentation. Okay, so we can download a shell script that will install the .NET profiler. So we then install it and we set up the .NET home, the home where that profiler is going to be installed. We do the installation. Then what happens is, is that OpenTelemetry comes with this convenience shell script that allows us to automatically set up some of the required parameters in order for the .NET application to understand that there's a profiler available and it should start using that when the application starts up. So there are a few environment variables that it's needed in order to get that to happen. And OpenTelemetry comes with a, with a shell script that essentially sets all that up for us, which is really nice, really convenient. Now, over here at Elastic, we created this platform detection, detection script. And if you have a look at it, you'll notice that something really simple is happening here. We're just changing or moving a directory from one directory to the other. And we do this if you're on ARM. So if you're on an M1 or an M2 processor, you'll really appreciate this so that when we build this application, if we do so on ARM, this little workaround here will allow the open telemetry instrumentation to work absolutely fine, right? So that's a, a really useful little workaround that you may want to take advantage of yourself, especially if you're developing on Mac OS on an M1 or an M2 processor. So let's have a quick look at the program we've got here. We've got this login controller that essentially is just um, responding to HTTP GET requests or POST requests with a random username, right? Alice, Bob, Charlie, Dave, or Eva. Very, very simple, okay? Nothing complicated going on here. And at the moment, if we look inside Elastic, we don't have any .NET services uh, coming through on here. So what we need to do is we need to go into Elastic and click Add Data in the top right-hand corner there. Click on Open Telemetry and get some information out of here to feed into our Docker container at startup so it can be uh, used for environment variables, right? So if we go to our code, you'll see here I already prepared a Docker script, uh, a Docker run command, sorry. And I just need to add in those bits and pieces. So if I go over to here, I want this bearer token. So let me just grab that. And I can pop that into here in Visual Studio Code. As you can see here, boom, in that goes. And then over here, I want to grab the Elastic URL, grab that, and put that over here into this OTLP endpoint stanza or command line argument, sorry, that we've got here. So let's pop that in there. So now we should have enough to run and use the instrumentation. So let's try that out. So let's paste that into here. Uh, we, looks like we've got everything we need. And press enter. There we go. So the profiler has been initialized. So that means that the open telemetry profiler is working. Now we just need to see if it's connecting to Elastic. First, though, we're going to execute a few requests just to make sure that. Um, Oh, one thing that I forgot to do is, of course, I forgot to add in the port to this command. So let's just do that quickly so that we can map. Otherwise, uh, we won't get access to port 80. So we just need to do minus P on here. We'll map it to 8080 to make things easy and uh, start it up. Okay, right, so now let's have a look. There we go. We've come back with a username, Charlie. 
we can keep doing that. In fact, actually, let's write a little script to essentially load some traffic onto this environment. So what we can do is we can do while true do and then curl. We can uh, paste in that URL. We can sleep for a second and then done. And then that will generate some traffic for us. So now let's have a little look in Elastic to see if it has indeed appeared. Yes, look, there we go. We have our .NET hotel service appearing. And so if we click on that, we can now see some metrics coming through and a login transaction has appeared. So let's dive into that transaction a little bit. And we can see on the latency correlations graph that typically that transaction has been taking around two to three milliseconds. But there was one that was very long. And I'd, I'd assume that this one was because um, it was the first transaction after the CLR environment had started. You know, sometimes these things need a bit of time to warm up. So if we uh, have a look at that, we can see we've got a trace. And if we were making a back end call to a database or something like that, we'd actually be able to see that in here as well. But because this is a very simple service, right? If you actually look at the code, all we all we really do here is, you know, get a little bit of information and send it back. And uh, and yeah, so now you can see the .NET service in Elastic. And uh, it was pretty easy to do, really. So yeah. If you want to learn more about this, you should definitely go to the links that you see on the screen here. Just scan the QR codes if you're interested in an APM quick start. Uh, you want to look about open telemetry integration or you need an elastic observability guide. Thanks very much, everybody, and happily instrumenting your .NET applications.